it's been this incredible journey, but I went with a vision to see a bride raised up because it's not the mission, the face of missions is changing today. It's not about we with our Western skills and abilities going in and doing the task for the people anymore, for the Sudanese people in my context. No, no. It's about us going and being the face of God's love, being the face of his love and raising up a movement of love that will literally change a nation from the inside out. One of our Sudanese leaders kind of said it, I think he said it better than I ever could. He said, mama, that's what they call me. I mean, I've got 110 kids. So <laughs> they say, mama, he said, we've seen aid. We've seen government programs. We've seen international, international aid that's come from the UN. We've seen religion, but we've never seen love. And this is what's gonna ha this is what makes what's going on here different. This is what's gonna change our nation. And I said, yes, you got it. See, the gospel is very, very simple. It's not complicated. If it's too complicated for one of my five-year-olds to get, it's too complicated. The gospel is simply about loving Jesus and loving the one person that he puts in front of us every day. And we're learning that in Sudan. It's, that it's just, it's not at all complex. It doesn't require a great strategic plan. It just requires being so full of God and his love and knowing how loved we are that we have something to give away. And our kids are learning this. They're on a journey. We're all on a journey together. Um, we started in 2006 on Christmas Day. We, when I got to Sudan, you know, Jesus and I, we like to have fun. I like parties. How many of you like parties? Almost everybody. How many of you like to eat good food? Oh, good. Everybody. Well, guess what? There are some things that are somewhat similar the world over. My friends in Sudan, my family in Sudan, they like to eat good food and they like parties too. <laughs> and so on Christmas, for Christmas, my first year there, Jesus asked me, what did I want to see happen? What did I want to do for my first Christmas? And I said, Jesus, I want to throw a big party and feed a bunch of people that wouldn't get a chance to eat. Because that sounds great. How many do you want to feed? Well, I think I have faith for about a thousand. <laughs> now, this was before I had any money in the bank account to pay for it. <laughs> and it was a grand affair, and we, we actually did. We fed a thousand people, and we didn't just feed them beans and boiled maize mush that we typically eat. We had that because they like it, but we had rice. We bought a cow and killed the cow and cooked the cow after we had to go catch the cow because it ran away. You know, only in Sudan, right? And um, we had salad and, and fruit and things that most people wouldn't get a chance to eat all year long. And we said, we're gonna, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it right. And it was a practical demonstration of the heart of God and of his kingdom. You know, love is very, very, very practical. And I just cried when I saw, when I saw, you know, how God fulfilled his word. And we cut our ribbon and did our little ceremonial. We're open now. And had taken in our first 12 children that we had identified that met our criteria of being orphaned, abandoned, or at risk. And they came to live with us and our family started. And now, not even two years later, <laughs> I mean, it boggles my brain. I don't actually understand how it happened. People want our strategic plan, and I, I just don't really have one to give them. Not like they're thinking, at least. <laughs> and we started with, with 12, and now, 22 months later, we've got 110. 81 of them live with us, live with me in the house I live in, <laughs> which we're going to be moving onto our land, which you saw some pictures of during the, during the little video. And we're very happy because we have about 300 people on any given day on half an acre of land in the middle of the city. That's a little cozy. 
We, we, we actually like our 40 acre plot much better for what we need to do to go and to grow and whatnot. So we're hoping and planning to move on, on um, right after Christmas this year out to the land. And we're so excited. It's right outside of town. And by the way, we live in a city called Ye, which my friends give me a hard time about because I've said, yay, God, for years. And now I live there. <laughs> wow and rock on are just down the road. <laughs> Literally, we have a wow and a rock on. It, they're just they're a couple hundred miles away, but they're there. And we started, and we started, I didn't start with a great funding proposal. I didn't start with a strategic plan. In fact, I had everyone and their cousin ask me if I had a feasibility study. Well, my boss kind of did it, and he thinks it's feasible. So I'm going to go with his recommendation. <laughs> I said, without Jesus, it would be an impossibility study. So no, I don't have a feasibility study. Because the things that are absolutely not feasible and impossible in this realm are his speciality. And he loves to show off and show himself strong on those that are willing to let him. So it's been this incredible journey. And we have 81 kids that live with us. We have a second center now as of the last two months on the other side of the country. I haven't actually even been there yet. And we've got another whatever the remainder is are in our community care program and they probably have more by now because they keep adding even when i'm not there and several churches that we've either started or we've networked with we're training leaders we have a primary school that serves an additional 150 children from the community it's it's pretty mind-boggling what jesus does and he he didn't pick me because i was especially qualified or I had all of my ducks in a row, or I had what the world would look at as what I needed to get the job done. He picked me because I was willing to say yes. So what can God do with your yes? What can God do with your simple little yes every day? You say yes to him and yes again and yes again till there's no no left in your heart. And friends, we will see God change the world. If all we'll do is say yes. Because Jesus is not after a building or a box or a plan or a strategy. He didn't die for a boardroom meeting. Praise God. <laughs> he died for a bride. And the bride is still incomplete. The bride is still missing. There are parts of his bride that are still lost. Some of them are lost down my street in Sudan, and some of them are lost down your street right here in Florida. And so my prayer is that God would give you the eyes of love to be able to see every man, woman, and child that you meet through his eyes. I love your mission statement, Pastor. I love it. I think it's God's mission statement, too, for us. You know, the first and the second commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Well, it's pretty hard to love your neighbor until you can love yourself. And know God's love for you. And so our kids are discovering every day God's love for them. They're not orphans. We don't have an orphanage. All we have are sons and daughters of our Father in heaven. And they're learning that they're loved. And so my little Onzia who came and she would scream and yell and flail and she'd fall on the ground and she'd hit the ground and she'd lay on the ground. And what was I going to do? Was I going to discipline her? No, she is traumatized. She needed love. She needed discipline too, but she needed love. And so I would get down and I would lay on the ground with her and I'd put my arm right out to where she was and I'd just lay in the dirt with her until she put her little hand in mine and we get up together. That's what Jesus does with us. He finds us in our brokenness and he goes to where we are. And because of love, he changes us from the inside out. And now my little Onzia, a year and a half later, she's five now. She's taking little Victoria Joy, who's almost two and has quite an attitude by the hand and helping her get a glass of water 
And she's learning. She knows she's loved, and so she's able to show love. That's the kingdom of heaven. You know, my kids pray for the blind and the deaf. And we routinely see them healed. Sometimes we don't, but often we do. We see the blind see and the deaf hear. We see the crippled walk. We see all sorts of signs and wonders. And I love them. And I'm grateful for them. I'm excited about them. But the greatest miracle of all that I have ever seen, and I've been doing this 10 years, 12 years now, different parts of the world, the greatest miracle I've seen is a life that is changed by the love of God. And so I just want to encourage you. You are a part of everything that you saw. Every little life, every, every little child, every leader, every church, every miracle, you're a part.